I've brought a water bottle on stage. I get a little bit thirsty when I'm nervous. I'm so nervous right now. <laughs> uh, but let's get this started. Um, so hi, I'm Andy. Hi. How are you doing? Hey. Oh. You look like you go to this school. By that, I mean you look young. <laughs> How are the kids? They're doing good? Yeah, they're doing good? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, hi, Grandma. Hi. <laughs> so, yeah. Warm up the crowd, Angela. Warm up the crowd. They'll be really responsive. Are you guys warm? Yeah? You're, you're feeling okay? Put on a jacket if you don't feel warm. So, let's start this. Um, you'll find out what I'm about to talk about in like a few seconds, but before that, quick story. I originally didn't want to do monologue show, but I had this very supportive friend who is in the audience right now. Hi, wherever you are. Um, she, she came up to me one day and she said, Angela, 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 you have to do monologue show. I, I don't know, I, I got AP tests, I, I got homework. I wouldn't do the homework even if I wasn't in monologue show, but... <laughs> No, 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 Angela, you don't understand. If you don't do a monologue show, I will condemn you to the land of the dead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I cross the river steps, and I knock on the seventh gate of hell. <laughs> Satan walks out. <laughs> you again! <laughs> Take me back. <laughs> so yeah, thank you, friend. Thank you, Satan. Couldn't have done this without you guys. Uh, well, you know, this this room really reminds me of my high school experiences. It's. <laughs> silently passing judgment on me. Um, again, I, I feel really, really nervous. Uh, uh, but, you know, people always talk about high school like it was the best thing that ever happened to them. Best four years of my life! It, except for college applications and, and tests and homework and classes and the teachers and, well, walking in the hallways wasn't that great. So, 90% of the high school you just forgot about. This is one ten percent that you remember. Oh, and it must have been great. And you know, the problem with memories is that you don't get to pick or choose what memories stay. So all the memories stay, all four years, and they stay and they stay and they stay, and one day you realize they've hung family photos everywhere, and they're harassing the neighbors. So you say, get out. All of you, get out. They hide in the basement. They wait. They wait for that one moment. Hey, Angela! Oh, you're trying to socialize? Let me tell you about all <laughs> Thanks. So I'm here, you know, I, I think it's about time I remind you guys about a few things that you probably won't miss about high school. When you're reaching for a pencil and your hand brushes up against something moist and warm and on the underside of your desk you pull it out and you realize it's gum, minty fresh. <laughs> And, and it's pretty crowded, you know, people walk shoulder to shoulder to shoulder, laughing and talking, oh, hi friends, hi friends, how you doing? And you're walking right behind them. It's like this impenetrable fortress of Troy. You need a horse to plow through. And you're walking in the wrong direction. Your class is this way. Why are you walking this way? Oh, here's my pen. Here's my pencil. Here's my notebook. Because your friend thought it'd be hilarious to just walk behind you and unzip every pocket of your bag. <laughs> and you know, that uncomfortable feeling about eating in a public place like the cafeteria, so you eat lunch in the bathroom. <laughs> but see, the problem is that people use the bathroom for not eating. So <laughs> you're standing in line, people are like, oh, do you have to go? I was like, no, I just want to eat lunch here. <laughs> okay. Now, here's the problem. See, high school bathrooms, water spots. Water spots, water spots, smears all over the glass from people who have to be this 
clothes to examine every divine bit of their face. <laughs> the eyeliner can somehow make it to the eyes, but the paper towel cannot make it to the trash can. <laughs> the toilet paper is an inch radius around the toilet bowl. <laughs> can you follow that logic with me? Oh, you can't. There is no logic. <laughs> but as much as I complain about the experiences in high school, I think the reason my teenagers don't like high school that much is because a lot of the material we learn is unrelatable. There's, there's that dead white guy. Shakespeare. <laughs> Shakespeare, uh, dead white guy, typical dead white guy. He was a very good poet. We read a lot of his works in class. Only ever in class. We say we read his stuff outside of class. Don't believe us. Don't believe us. <laughs> High schoolers, best liars ever. Here's, here's the problem. See, all of his work is in old English. It's all... Good morning, top of the morning to you, to Midla. Would you like some crumpets and tea? Bye now, <laughs> No, that, that gets pretty tiring after a while. I think if we modernize Shakespeare, give it a good backdrop of music, I, you know, Shakespeare could be more relatable to the current team. So I'm here to teach you how to make Shakespeare more relatable. So, first thing is first. You need to wear something cool. And I, I don't mean cool with an L, I mean cool. Like a pigeon. Like a cool. <laughs> Sorry. I, I think I've ruined Hamlet. <laughs> 
you, you guys gotta hide your kitties when I'm on stage. I am a very bad influence. But, uh, see, the problem is that I, I want to go through all this effort to make Shakespeare and other educational sources fun, because learning is fun. That, that was actually a joke, guys. <laughs> see, see, learning isn't really that fun, but you know who likes to try to sell that point? Sesame Street. You know what Sesame Street has? Six foot lemon feather chickens walking around. It's not, it's not a place I want to live in. You go outside, they step on you. All right. I think Sesame Street itself isn't a bad show, but the role models they have on there are a little iffy. They got an elephant on there that's a junkie. Hi, big bird. I'm gonna get my cold medication for Gordon. <laughs> and his name is Snuffles. Snuffles! You got a mortician on there who teaches kids how to count. How many body bags does it take to clean up a crime scene? <laughs> be treated like something other than the fancy mitten that he was. <laughs> but, <laughs> Elmo was only a puppet. One day, when Elmo was in his apartment fantasizing about all the places he could travel to, he decided, I'm gonna be a bird. So he, he turns to his pet goldfish, which he, which he constantly talks to. Dorothy, don't you think I could be a bird? Elmo is a bird! Dorothy says, oh, blah, 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 yes, Elmo. <laughs> Gosh darn it, you jerk, you never feed me. <laughs> so, he opens the window, and he steps out onto the ledge, and he, he gazes out into the horizon past the barbed wire walls and the sentries. <laughs> and he spread his arms out, and he jumped. Elmo was dead. <laughs> now, see, El you know, Elmo and any 
other puppet, they're very easy to replace. You just, you take some bolts of cloth, you stitch them together, and bam, new Elmo. Nobody would ever notice the difference. You have them, have you? I can sense there are people in the audience leaning away from me. I am, I'm sorry. Hi! Hi! Hey there. Okay. See, I, I can sense there are people in the audience leaning away from me, and I, I feel really bad for ruining your childhood. Like, I, I'm very, very sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. You, you're, you're crying. I am, I am, I am so sorry. But see, you're not the only people with delusional childhoods. I had a delusional childhood. Uh, when I was little, thank you. When I was little, I thought French bread was made out of French people. <laughs> I still ate it. <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, I really, really like some like French bread and rye, you know, like salami. Okay, all right. German chocolate cake convinced me that all Germans taste the same. That is not true. I have actually experimented this. It, it's not true. <laughs> Sweat and salt and whatever else it is. Alright. <laughs> See, when I was little, I also liked to eat raw tomatoes, kind of like apples. I know some of you in the audience do that too, but you won't admit it because. You know, it's kind of weird. But, see, I, I ate these raw tomatoes. I'd find the pockets of juice and I'd bite in and just suck out all the blood. I mean, the juice. Suck out all the juice. I don't quite remember having friends as a kid. Pretty sure I had some. Could just be a delusion. Now, see, I don't think I was even the worst kid. I, I feel like there's a lot of kids who vampirize tomatoes and eat French people. And, but, but see, I think the kid with the worst, worst childhood, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, people, that's not his name. It's Jesus Chris. The T at the end is actually a cross for extra holiness. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was crucified. Jesus Christ had 12 disciples. But in, 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 in 13? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Okay. I assumed it was 12 because 13 was an unlucky number. But, um, see, the, pro the problem is that the worst luck in that book went to his dad, actually, Jesus Chris's dad. Imagine coming home one day after making tables and chairs and tables. Honey, I'm home. Oh, dear, I have wonderful news for you. I'm pregnant. Uh, I'm sorry. Mary, we have not. <laughs> Don't worry, Joseph, it's not yours. What? their barn. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Yes. We would like to see your baby. <laughs> we brought carpets and other classy crap. Please leave the manger there. <laughs> I think the wise men weren't that wise with their gift choices. See, you have a young, able-bodied couple living in a barn. If anything, they're probably hungry. They should have brought like a sandwich or like a pumpkin, something to eat. <laughs> but no, they, they brought perfume and gold. Of course, you can eat that too. Tastes, tastes like French people. 
You know, speaking of food, you guys have been laughing a lot. I, I wonder if laughter had a flavor, would you laugh as much? Like if it was a very tasty flavor, like if giggles tasted like Fruit Loops, would you laugh as much? Tooth 